How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle to Daryl vs Gilmore, also known as Mercury from the Discord server in the OU tier. Go ahead and join the Discord server, it's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now, there is a link in the description down below. And friendly reminders, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Run away 20k by the end of the year and I'd love for you to be a part of that journey. So looking at the team, they got a pretty tough one. The Dorkhold with the Venusaur combination. They've even got the Charizard with the Solar Power. Uh, the Rotom Heat Skarmory is cool and Great Tusk with that Protosynthesis is going to be a threat. Got to watch out for that. So Corviknight is going to be important for the Great Tusk. Um, it looks like Milotic will be important for the Charizard and to an extent the Venusaur. Um, to an extent. I think Hitmonchan is going to be more useful for Venusaur because of the Assault Vest. Uh, Darkrai looks like it could put in some work if we get it set up. Um, but we need to make sure that Sun's on the field. So I think they lead with Torkoal here. So I'm going to lead with Sandy Shocks just to get the Stealth Rocks up. And then we'll just kind of go from there. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Mercury. So they're going to lead off with Rotom as we let off with Sandy Shock. So... Effectively, all they can do here is um, overheat or choice lockers. They don't know what item we are, though, so we could easily be choiced as well. So they might not trick us here. Um, so I am going to go for a stealth throw right off the bat. There we go. We outspeed, so we know they're not choice scarf, which is always good to know. And then they go for a bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum, a trick anyway. What are they tricking us? Are they tricking us the choice specs? Interesting choice. Get it? Interesting choice. Uh, choice Scarf. So we actually still outspeed them, even though we were Focus Sashed. Interesting. So they must be a defensive Rotom with Choice Scarf. Very interesting. So, what can we do here? So there's a couple of things. They're probably going to expect us to um, Volt Switch or Power Gem. So they may go into Great Tusk here. I am going to go for a Volt Switch anyway. They actually stay in. They don't go for Great Tusk. So we get a Volt Switch off, breaking their newly acquired Focus Sash. And then we can just go into whatever we want to take on this Rotom. They probably go for a Volt Switch of their own, expecting us to switch. Or they go for a Will-O-Wisp, one of the two. I think I'm, my safest bet, because I don't want my hit one chance to get Will-O-Wisp, is to go into Milotic. So I am going to go into Milotic right now. There we go. Mentos is coming in. The Milotic's nice and shiny. Gotta love it. As uh, they go for a Volt Switch. So I could have gone hit one chan But Milotic takes it all the same anyway, so it's not a big deal. So... They get their Rotom out of there, and what are they going to go into on the um, Milotic? They could go Torkoal, they could go Great Tusk. Great Tusk is a bit of a risky one, though, to get the Rapid Spin off, because obviously um, I could just scold them. So I think, yeah, they go Torkoal. Get that Sun up. They're probably, yeah, I was going to say, they're probably not Heavy Duty Boots. They're probably Heat Rock, if I had to guess, to keep that Sun up for as long as possible. And all I'm going to do is, they could be Rapid Spin Torkoal as well. They could be Rapid Spin Torkoal. So I'm going to go for a flip turn first, get on out of there, and go into something a bit more suitable to taking on this Torkoal. So flip turn comes through, bit of chip damage on the Torkoal, that's definitely physically defensive, by the way it took down the sun, definitely physically defensive. Um, and they probably either go for a Solar Beam, or a Rapid Spin, or a Stealth Rock of their own, if I had to guess, if I had to guess. So what I'm going to do is, because they're not going to go for a Body Press, surely not, I think I'm going to go Darkrai to put a bit of offensive pressure on it get a nasty plot off or something like that. So I think I will go Darkrai here. Darkrai also doesn't care if it gets burned, so that's something. So let's bring Darkrai in. They do go for a Rapid Spin, which is going to break our potential for Focus Sash, which we don't have, because they obviously know Sandy Shock's out of Focus Sash. I'm not going to be running Sash on two Pokemon, that's for sure. Um, and now I'm going to go for a... What do I go for here? Do I go for straight for a Dark Pulse? Because what are, they, what are they going to here? So let's go for a Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse should be fine. They do withdraw the Torkoal. They haven't really got a switch into Dark Pulse. Um, other than Great Tusk. And Rotom comes in. That is not going to appreciate it too much. And um, so we go for a Dark Pulse here. Are they special defensive? Looks like it. But it's a 2-8 KO regardless. So let's go for that Dark Pulse once again. Take out that Rotom real quick. There we go. So Darkrai is coming in like a menace. Absolute menace. Taking out the Rotom. I can't believe Darkrai's OU. Like, I, I, I will admit, it's it's not exactly amazing. It's really good. Not amazing. Ryujin Jaka comes in, which is a brilliant Bleach reference um, from the Charizard right there. I love that reference. That's such a cool reference. So this thing is going to hit really hard on the special side with its solar power ability. Luckily, we have the Milotic just sitting there waiting to come in. They may go for a solar beam predicting the Milotic switch. Um, they may also not. They may go straight for the KO on the Darkrai with the Fire Blast. 
Either or, we should be all right. So they go for a weather ball. That's a 100 base power fire type move right now. With solar power, does a lot of damage. But we know they're heavy duty boots, so they're not boosting item or anything like that. Which means they could easily switch up moves right now and go for a solar beam. I am going to go for a recover just to scout for that. They do withdraw. And are they going to go Venusaur? Venusaur comes in. No nickname. Oh, that's a shame. Brute Root is right there. You could just call it Brute Root. Just call it Brute Root. Anyway, recover comes through. It's going to get us right back up to nearly full. And then the leftovers will do the rest of the, the, rest of the way. The one HP that we needed to get to full HP is right back there. There we go. So, with the Venusaur in, we're in a bit of a pickle. Because what, what can we do? This thing's probably got Weather Ball. So we can't exactly just go into Corviknight because we'll get Weather Ball in the face. So we're going to have to go slow and steady. Do we go for an Ice Beam? I think we have to go for an Ice Beam here. I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. They go for a Growth, which is terrifying. Look at those stats now. Special Attack rose sharply. We're in a bit of a pickle right now because our Venusaur is fast, strong, all the above. I'm confident we can live a Solar Beam now. I don't need to Terra. And I go for an Ice Beam here. They go for a Solar Beam at plus two. They stab. It's not over. It's not overgrow or anything like that. And they haven't got a boosting item. Still takes out my special defensive Milotic. I didn't really have a good switch there. Because they could have Weather Ball as well. I think the best thing we can do here. And their Life Orb. There we go. Life Orb. I was going to say the best thing we can do is wait for the sun to wear out. But it wore out this turn. So we're actually alright. We are golden. But I'm confident that Hitmonchan could have took, a, took one of them anyway. So... Let's go Dark Cry once again, and we'll go straight for the Ice Beam. Ice Beam will definitely KO the Venusaur from there, because the unboosted Milotic one did nearly half. So we can safely go for an Ice Beam right now. They're probably going to Torkoal expecting an Ice Beam, but I don't think they need... No, I don't think they do, actually, because Dark Pulse could probably finish the Venusaur off at this point. I'm going to say they definitely switch out Venusaur, because Venusaur's a big threat to my team. Especially if he's got Weather Ball, big threat. So they go Skarmory. Skarmory is an ex acceptable... Um, switch so we go for an ice beam it's going to do a decent chunk of damage i was going to say about half um which is always nice and they are leftovers oh no the red card interesting so i thought i was leftovers for a second there that's going to force us to switch out into something we don't want to be in with and that's going to be rillaboom so rillaboom gets dragged out which is a real shame because now they get free spikes or self rocks whichever one they want to go for so skarmory is a pretty interesting pokemon let's go for a u-turn first get out of there like so we know Skarmory doesn't get U-turn or anything like that, so we don't have to worry too much about it doing that. Um, we can just go straight into Sandy Shocks right now, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Or am I going to go Darkrai? Let's go Darkrai real quick. Darkrai comes in. Looking amazing. I love Darkrai. They go for a Roost, so Roost comes through. Now, what does the Skarmory do in this position? That's the real question. I'm confident Body Press won't KO us, but they now have their Sturdy back. So do I Terra Poison? Do I need my Terra for anything else? I think Darkrai could actually do this. Darkrai could do this if we Terra Poison. Let's Terra Poison now. Now I'm going to Dark Pulse. I'm going to Dark Pulse just to see how much damage it does. As it does over half, they go for a spike. Yeah, I thought they wouldn't have body press. Normally, you see um, Skarmory's with, like, spikes and stuff. But when it's a red card version, they normally have, like, Rocky Helmet or Leftovers. Um, so I wasn't too worried about that. So let's go for a Dark Pulse real quick. It'll take it out. It'll do a lot of damage to anything on the team, really. They're going to withdraw the Skarmory into something that can take a Dark Pulse. Only thing they've got is Great Tusk. They go into the Torque Hole to get that sun back up. Makes a lot of sense, to be fair. Getting that sun up is going to be really important for them. We go for a Dark Pulse. Nearly takes out the Torkoal from full. I'm kind of glad it didn't, though, because that burns away a turn of sun. So well, let's go for a Dark Pulse again. They're going to withdraw the Torkoal. What are they going to go into? Great Tusk? Skarmory comes in. So they're going to sack off the Skarmory. They're going to save the Torkoal for later. We go for the Dark Pulse. Skarmory goes da -da -da down. So Darkrai versus the sun. Who is the winner? Well, it's going to have to be Darkrai, I think. They're probably going to bring in the Venusaur right now. Oh, no, they bring in the Charizard. I guess Charizard can take a Dark Pulse from full. So, we are in a bit of a pickle right now. So, let's see what Char well, let's see what we can do against this Charizard. So, I'm leaning towards... Do we need Darkrai? Do we really need Darkrai? Can we win without it? I think we can. 
So I think getting as much damage off on the Charizard as possible is going to be important. So I'm going to go for a Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse comes through. Definitely does over half. They go for a Weather Ball. That should take us out. It does with a critical hit. Don't think the crit mattered. As Kruger goes down. So the Charizard is a big threat right now. It's got the solar power going for it. It's got all that stuff going for it. But it's fine. We have things for it. I think Kruger was our only chance actually of doing that. I think getting off that damage on with the Kruger is probably the best thing we could have done. So now we just go into our Sandy Shocks. Now I'm not going to Terra because I don't need to. I'm not going to Terra because I don't need to. But we do get the Protosynthesis in. Special attack. Which means I can actually go for a Terra Blast right now. Because they could bring in the Great Tusk on the Vault Switch. They know we're Choice Lock because they tricked us the Choice Scarf. Let's go for the Terra Blast. And if they do withdraw into Venusaur, we can Terra Ice on them. They bring in the Great Tusk. They bring in the Great Tusk. It's going to get that Protosynthesis in its um, attack, which is terrifying. We go for a Terra Blast, and we could still Terra here. We could still Terra here into an Ice type. And I think I'm going to. So I'm going to Terra Ice real quick. With my uh, Sandy Shocks. Now, they haven't terrored yet. So they could easily terror this thing into a water type right now. And counteract my Terror Blast Ice. But I don't think they will. I have a feeling they're going to let this go down. Wait, did they already terror? I'm just looking at that Pokemon. I'm thinking, did they terror? No, they haven't terrored. We go for a Terror Blast Ice. And that's definitely going to take KO this Great Tusk right now. As down it goes. With a special attack boost from Protosynthesis, I thought Terra Blast without the Terra Ice would do a lot more damage than that to a Great Tusk. In comes the Venusaur. So this thing is a threat to my Sandy Sharks. They could definitely have Weather Ball, which is, a, well, as we know, is a um, pretty hard-hitting move. So I don't think I need Corviknight, so I'm going to go Corviknight now. Corviknight can go down to a Weather Ball all at once. I really think that's, um, that's fine. So we're going to Noctis the Corviknight. There we go. They do go for a Terra, probably Fire, if I had to guess. Probably Fire. Grass. Interesting. So they were going all out with the Solar Beam. Or maybe they've got another Grass type move, like Giga Drain. Solar Beam it is. So Solar Beam comes through. It's going to still do a bit of damage to my Corviknight, because I am physically defensive, not specially defensive. But it is four times resisted, so we should be golden here. That still does a bit of chip damage, you know, a bit of chip damage. So, Venusaur loses some health. They definitely should have Weather Ball, surely. The Charizard's got Weather Ball, so they should have Weather Ball on this thing. Let's go for a U-turn. They withdraw the Venusaur. They're going to withdraw the Venusaur, and they're going to go into the Torque I'm guessing. Ryujin Jacker comes in the Charizard. So, that's fine. We go for a U-turn. It's going to be a bit of chip damage on the Charizard. There we go. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, we don't actually have Darkrai anymore. So the only thing we can really do is Sandy Sharks. Or we could go with a Hitmonchan play. Hitmonchan is a good one. Because we can Bullet Punch them. But we can Ice Punch the Venusaur. And then we, ooh. I think Hitmonchan is time for you to shine. Because I believe in the Hitmonchan. I believe in the Hitmonchan right now. So they're going to get their solar power, which means we can finish them off with Bullet Punch right now. So let's go for a Bullet Punch. I believe in Hitmonchan. They're going to withdraw the Charizard. Why are they withdrawing Charizard? To go into Torkoal? Just to sack it off? Ah, uh, I see what they're doing. So we go for a Bullet Punch here on the Torkoal. They're not sacking it off necessarily, but um, the Harsh Sunlight actually faded now. So that's an unfortunate play on my opponent's behalf. So I'm going to go for a Drain Punch right now. Just to KO this Torkoal. And I think it's a little cleanup from Hitmonchan right now. So, yes, I brought Hitmonchan to an OU game. And yes, it's actually doing all right. It's only just hit the field. But it's it's the cleanup crew. It's the cleanup crew. Because I know for a fact this thing can live a hit from Venusaur, no problem. I know it can. And that Venusaur does not want to take this Ice Punch to the face. So let's go for an Ice Punch real quick. They go for a Sludge Bomb. Now nah, we're eating that up every single day of the week. Every single day of the week. Ice Punch comes through. Boom. Down goes the Venusaur. As down it goes. It's, 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 it's nice and refreshing to see Hitmonchan doing something in the game. <laughs> Taking out some of these threats like the Venusaur and the uh, 
good old Torkoal. And now all we have to do is let the Charizard go down to a Bullet Punch. Watch me misclick. Bullet Punch comes through. And that is going to be the game. So GG Maker, that was a pretty fun one, actually. It was interesting to see a Sun Team and especially interesting to see Charizard because Charizard's obviously not very good. I mean, it's all right. It's just not, you know, top tier or anything like that like it used to be back in the um, Gen 2 and 3 days. Um, but yeah, anyway, GG. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to. Use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.